Welcome to the Self Girl Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Marie, a courage coach, creative soul, and adventure seeker. Since through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019, I'm on a mission to help you embrace your most confident self so you can achieve your dreams too. If you're eager for deep conversations, big questions, and meaningful connections, join me on the quest to discovering how we can create a more magical and memorable life. Hello, nerds! How are you? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Today, I want to talk about how we use toxic positivity against ourselves. We understand the idea when a friend of ours is sad, for example, that it doesn't help to just tell them, oh, come on, just perk up, be happy. We understand that when it comes to others, but when it comes to ourselves, we haven't quite integrated the concept. Let's start with an analogy. Think about when you were a teenager and you got your heart broken for the first times. I remember the night where my crush danced a slow dance with someone else. I called my dad and asked him to come pick me up and I cried in the car all the way back home and then I curled up in the ball in my bed and I kept crying. So my dad just sat there and I think he didn't really know what to say and um, my mom, I could sense that she was uncomfortable and she would say things like, oh, I don't like seeing you this way, but I don't know what to say. And she would just sit next to me. And that was amazing. However, there are moments where we have big emotions when we're teenagers and our parents cannot handle it. They cannot handle the discomfort and so they try to make the feelings go away like don't be sad it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine feel better happy thoughts happy thoughts (laughs) right we've all been there when someone's trying to make us feel better when we're not ready And they're only doing that so that they can feel better because our messy human feelings make them feel uncomfortable. And this is awful. This is what toxic positivity is. And when we experience this a lot growing up, then we're going to tend to do this to ourselves as adults. When we're going through challenging emotion that we think is inconvenient, when we realize that we have a pattern that's slowing us down, we judge ourselves. For example, you notice that you get anxious every time you're with a certain person and you're like, I shouldn't be this way. I should have grown out of it by now. Or you notice that you get nervous when you're around a lot of people and you tell yourself, oh, I need to fix this. This is getting in my way. Or that you get really sweaty when you speak in front of others. You're like, come on, get your act together. You know better than this. You know that you're not in danger. You know it's going to be fine. You've done this a million times. So what is it for you? What's the part of you that you wish could disappear? Now, when you do this, you are rejecting a part of you. And the pattern that you've noticed doesn't get in your way near as much as the judgment you have about it. I'm going to give you an example from my own life. So when I was 13 years old, approximately, I was in theater class and we had to practice the play. Now, one of my friends had a singing role, but she was not there that day. So the teacher asked, who can replace her today while she's gone and I raised my hand. Now the teacher said, you, (laughs) you cannot sing for shit. And he laughed at me in front of everyone. And I remember wanting to disappear. So I've integrated that memory. It's a trauma, right? It's a kind of trauma. And now when I want to do something new, when I want to put myself out there and I'm not sure that it's going to be well received, This part of me, this 13-year-old in me is still there and it freaks out because it's scared that something like this is going to happen again. My body remembers and so she shows up. She shows up. She doesn't want me to, to, to raise my hand, basically. She wants me to stay small because that's what she has associated as safety. It's safer if you don't volunteer. 
But if I get angry with myself whenever she comes up, whenever I get nervous about putting myself out there, then it's like I'm telling her that she should get over it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine telling that hurt teenager, that hurt 13-year-old with all the zits in her face, she's doing her best, she feels awkward every day? Can you imagine telling her, oh my god, get over it, it's not that bad. No, it's the last thing you would do to your young self. You'd be like, come here, honey. Let me give you a hug. This teacher's an asshole. You didn't deserve this. You were really brave for putting yourself out there, for trying something new. This was really courageous. But most often, this is not what we do. Most often, we lose patience with that part of us. We think, if only I didn't have that, coming up every time, my life would be so much easier. And we're just ignoring that young part of us. She ends up feeling unseen, misunderstood, and abandoned. When all she needs is for you to be there with her, I'm saying her because I'm talking about me, but it's for you to be there with them, to reassure them instead of pushing them out, instead of trying to make them feel better right away, instead of trying to shush their big feelings. They need you to be there for them. All the parts of you need you to welcome them in. This is going to make your journey so much more sustainable. You're not going to be in a rush to get out of quote-unquote negative emotions because you're not going to be judging yourself for being in them, for experiencing them. That's the only reason why we're in a rush to feel better and to fix our issues. It's because we judge ourselves for having them. But that is not how we heal. We heal by being the person that this young part of us needed in that moment. By being the grown-up we wish had stood up for us in that moment. Or that series of moments. Whatever it is for you that you experienced in the past. Where you felt alone and helpless. So much growth is going to come from stepping in the shoes of the person you wish had stood up to help. And I'm going to leave you with a piece of advice that my aunt gave me one day. She said to me, you've got monsters in you, demons, and you want to sit with them. They're not mean. They're just big, fluffy monsters. Just like, picture them like monster ink kind of monsters. (laughs) It's okay that they're there. You can sit with them, like lean almost on them, make tea for them, Make peace with their presence. Get comfortable. Get friendly. That's what they need. It's kind of like the Grinch. The Grinch isn't a monster. The Grinch isn't really mean. He's just hurt. He just needs love. And when he's shown love, you know what happens? His heart grows three sizes bigger. And that's the same for the parts of you who feel hurt. Ask yourself, what are the imperfect quote-unquote inconvenient parts of you that you try to push away that just need you to sit with them, make them like a peanut butter jelly sandwich and allow them to just be there, okay? And if you want help with that, get on the wait list for my program Brave and Bold. I'm opening the doors at the end of February. So if you want to be notified and if you want to learn more about how the program can help you find the courage to shape a life that's more in alignment with your values and that feels fulfilling and in which you have a space to just be your true self, then go to selfgrowthnerds.com slash brave and bold. You'll find the information there and you'll be able to add your name to the wait list. Okay. I love you all, and I will talk to you next week. Bye. If you love what you're hearing on the Self Growth Nerds podcast and you want individual help finding a new direction for your life and developing the courage to make your dreams a reality, you have to check out how we can work together on selfgrowthnerds.com or message me on Instagram at selfgrowthnerds. My clients say they would have needed that support years ago. So if you're tired of feeling like you're wasting your life, 
Don't wait. Get in touch now. And I cannot wait to meet you.